and uh, you have the floor just to introduce yourself and the members you brought with you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Oten um, and Vice Chair Gamble and esteemed council members. Thank you for giving us this time. Uh, I want to recognize um, our commission chair, Mattia Powell, here with me. And also wanted to thank our artists and staff in the back, um, uh, artists and arts organizations and staff here to help us. Um, uh, you've heard a lot of numbers this afternoon, so I wanted to tell some stories to balance it out a little bit. Um, you know, Nashville kind of got on my radar about five years ago when I was in, working in Baltimore County, and they just combined the tourism and arts office to see how they could um, work in synergy. And a national consulting firm, Johnson Consulting, told us we should study Nashville because the arts are thriving here in an organic way, and this is the city to emulate. So when I was working in Baltimore County, that's when the first radar um, popped up for me. Um, I wanted to thank you all for everything you do to keep the artists and arts organizations thriving here and here to ask for a little bit more of that as well. And in this past weekend, um, my kids are pandemic babies. Uh, for the first time, they got to see a Bharatanatyam performance at the Ganesha Temple this past weekend. Uh, and then we were at the farmer's market. There was a visual artist drawing uh, um, in, in the moment and making stickers for them. And then when we walked out of there, we saw a Bollywood pop-up happen for AAPI month. And so this is the kind of stories that really excites me to do what I do. And, and when people ask me what I do to say I serve the artists and arts organizations in Nashville, this is what I really relish doing. Um, and I just wanted to kind of highlight two other synergies here. Uh, you know, our health department has talked about health and all policies and talked about how about 20% of what we get for our health happens in the doctor's office and medication and 80% happens outside of those spaces, right? In our schools, libraries, studios, art spaces, community centers, parks. And I think that span is where the arts play, right? We're there, and we're there in the 20% of the hospital spaces too. You, you hear us in the elevator music, in the arts that in the studio, in the doctor's office. So along with that, just last week, the Surgeon General has put out a report saying that the biggest crisis facing our community is isolation right now. And, and are there again, there's the answer. The artists and arts organizations are working at these intersectional areas and trying to solve these issues. So I just want to kind of set that context for us. Um, we have a lot to celebrate and a lot to be thankful for, but we're at a pivotal moment. Um, we need your support to keep the arts thriving in Nashville. And you know, you all get to be the playwright and figure out what the next story is going to be. Um, artists are solving a lot of the needs that government agencies are doing, but need a little bit of extra support, whether it's community engagement, neighborhood, um, cultivation, working in our libraries, community centers, all those spaces. And artists are also working to solve unscripted problems, right? And so we know this because a lot of the businesses are now creating playrooms in their boardrooms and Google has a playroom where people can go throw play, paint or make music with the computer generated AI there. And so we know that people are learning from artists and it's, uh, it's a great place to be, but we need your support to keep moving that forward. In the handouts we've given you, we have two uh, dashboard um, um, charts that uh, tell us what grant applications uh, and project applications have come in. We've received uh, about $5.1 million worth of requests and operating grants. Um, and the grant applications went up from 55 last year to about 90 this year from the outreach efforts of our staff and also from simplifying the process. Our Thrive proposals went up from 2,256 this year, uh, again, demonstrating the need and the growth. Um, while that growth is happening, there's also a concerning trend happening here. Arts and Business Council has a study that says that 25% of artists are planning on moving out of here in the next two to three years. And to me, that's alarming, right? I think of them as the lifeblood of our community, of Music City, its city, Athens of the South, and what can we do to prevent that talent drain? Uh, and then for context, you know, uh, people might say, well, 90 up our organizations, do we need to fund every one of them? Uh, in 2019, there were 330 registered arts nonprofits in Nashville. Even if you assume 80 of them went away during the pandemic, that's 250. Only 90 of them are coming to us for funding because they know we don't have funding to give. And, and that's also concerning to me. How do we grow this pool? for um, organizations. And then 156 Thrive Projects, um, there's an estimate of 10,000 to 15,000 working artists in Nashville. And again, we're only barely scratching the surface there. 
the other thing I kind of want to raise for you as a as a talking point is that you know we've received about 2.1 million dollars in 2000 and we're about at about 2.7 to 2.9 depending on how you slice the numbers for our grants if you consider inflation we're actually our budget has shrunk we should be at about 3.7 to 3.8 million dollars if you just consider that mm -hmm. taking apart the growth of the city that's happened from 2000 to now and so despite that our funding has lagged behind and so if you look at some of the the last handout on your um, last hand on your packet has our comparison study that we commissioned and you'll see our peer cities of phoenix dallas austin and san francisco we picked that cohort because they're growing in the middle range they're not the fastest growing but they're growing at the same rate as nashville and so based on that and their budget we still are really far behind so i just wanted to bring that to your attention um, and so, so we're looking at all of this and trying to figure out how can we solve some of the issues. We really, really try to center the artists in everything we do. Um, since I've started, we've brought in community-led artist editing sessions for every grant we do. Uh, we're working on doing that for our public arts processes, for our Thrive projects. For all of that, the community has come in and walked us through the questions and helped us figure out how to make it better. Uh, along with that, we're also working to leverage relationships with community partners and increase awareness and access to our resources. Staff led 55 grant clinics this year and spent about 120 phone calls and Zoom calls and uh, helping community members get ready to apply for those um, grants and get prepped for them. So there's no gotcha at the end. We're trying to prepare them as they apply and get ready for the application. In the application for the Thrive program, 35% of them are from our BIPOC artists living in Nashville. Um, and I had the pleasure of doing a tour of North Nashville with Thaxton Waters and Alicia Bumrozik. And if you haven't taken that uh, tour, I highly recommend that tour. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about what artists are doing to hold um, the government space together. Uh, when Highway came and separated North Nashville, it did two things. It broke Nashville's black community into two groups. It also separated them from the rest of the city. And artists are holding that community together through the work they're doing, the murals, the community gathering spaces, woodcuts, uh, Fisk University. These are the places that are trying to keep that fabric together. And the Thrive applications are coming from those artists that are holding our communities together. Um, and then in continuation with our equity, I know there's $2 million capital allocation. Uh, I would really humbly request that it be redirected to Metro Arts. We want to do an open call. Again, we'll bring artists and arts organizations to come in, help us develop this process that's equitable and accessible to everyone. And we would love to have that capital process work through Metro Arts for, um, for open call process. So, I mean, like, this is where we are right now. And, and in February, we asked uh, for 1% of the combined budget uh, of the Metro government and the school, and that would give us about $30 million. That is still our ask. Uh, in, in about two to three years, we hope we get there. But for this year, I hope we can get to about $12 million. Uh, in, in the first page of the handout, you'll see that about nine I'm sorry, 7.3 is already come in in grant applications. 2.7 of that would be in phase two of our Thrive grants, and then the $2 million would go towards the capital projects we hope we can stand up. Um, that's been written into the budget right now. I'm, I'm happy to answer any more details you have as best as I can. Um, please be kind with me. I've only been here since September. Um, but but I, I hope to address all of your questions and concerns, and, and, and I'm available for a conversation now. Thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions? Or, or do I want to ask Chair Powell, did you want to say anything? Oh, well, I see that Nancy had a question, but I'll just say this. You know, this is my second hearing before this body, and I, will, I was driving over here, and I remembered where we were last year at this time. And I just, one, want to commend the staff and commend um, Daniel for really um, changing, making so many dramatic changes in a year. Uh, we were not in the same place when I sat here last year when we were above this body. Um, and we, we still have ways to go, but the fact that we have the community here supporting us, the fact that we have increased the amount of people that have come to Metro Arts um, for services and for support really tells me that we are doing the work that needs to be done to make sure that we're headed in the right direction. And I just wanted to acknowledge that before this body because it just it dawned to me when I drove down here where we were last year and where we are this year and how much how far we have come uh, in that short period. That's Thank all you. I have to say. Thank you, Matia. Uh, Councilmember Van Reese, you're recognized. 
Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I wanted to make sure that my colleagues uh, know to check the SharePoint file. I've, I have asked for the $2 million in capital cultural grants uh, excess fund to be uh, sent over to the commission uh, for allocation uh, with a plan uh, back to the council on, on that process so that we know kind of how that's working. I also would like um, a definition of capital so that uh, not only the, um, uh, the folks on the council, but the general public as well as the creative community understand what, it, what qualifies for it and what doesn't. Um, in addition to that, I know that um, you've been uh, also working on uh, kind of restaffing, relooking at what staff needs to be where, and in that process, and uh, there uh, may be uh, some salary savings that have already occurred. And I've asked the finance department to take a look at to see what that is, because I know even a little bit can go a long way. Um, to uh, work on the general grants, including but not limited to the, the Thrive grants. Um, if we can take any of those savings and repurpose them back into the pockets of artists, then I want that opportunity. So I've asked for, for some research to be done on that. And then as you move forward in looking at what um, you need for your staff, whether or not some of that money can be reallocated uh, to the community rather than staff. Um, it, that'll be a process for the following year. But if there is some savings out there, we wanna grab it and put it back in the right pocket. So I uh, wanted to make sure that, because uh, I know a lot of my colleagues will watch these videos if they can't come, uh, to know that those items are already in the SharePoint file. Um, and, uh, and I value your, your input um, as we move forward uh, regarding uh, the uh, Chair Roden's substitute budget. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to ask was about uh, public art. I know that I personally have been a little frustrated by getting the things done, and I know that the whole community has been, and that you have really taken uh, the bull by the horns to get things done, uh, particularly with the NEA grant, as it kind of pairs with the, the work that we've done in Madison. I know that Chair uh, Pridemore at the time when he was here on council, we worked really hard on making sure that the, those uh, public art dollars were gonna be spent in Madison, that still um, some have been, but not not in the way that we had envisioned. Uh, we know that, um, that we're on deck for a public art hopefully a sculpture of some sort on Madison Station Boulevard. And and if, if I got, if I understand the numbers right, there's like $8.8 .8 $8 million in unspent capital for the 1% fund. Um, and I know that it takes a long time to figure out where it's going, go through the process, do the call, get it back, do some of the community engagement. But if we have $5.4 million in operating, that you're getting, which is never enough, but it's there, um, plus the $2 million of capital support from the excess fund balance and the $8.8 .8 million in the 1% uh, balance, the potential for $16 million for next year is there to spend. And I, I want to do anything that we can do to facilitate that happening um, because I'm, I'm confident that if, it, if all of that does happen, then you will have the grounds in the following year to ask for more um, because I know that this is sort of a rebuild year. So um, I wanna do everything that I can do. Um, the community knows that I've, I've done my best for, this is my eighth budget, I'm trying to add on um, the uh, $2 million that we were able to do during COVID. I know some of it was, was sent back. I wanna give, give you a chance to kind of explain what happened there um, so that uh, people know that uh, we're doing all the right things by the money that you are getting. Um, and uh, with that, I'll let you kind of comment on those items. Thanks. Oh, you recognize, I'm sorry. So um, the, let me talk about the COVID dollars first. The Pathways Lending Project, you know, we only had about 60 days to turn around $2 million. And the uh, federal requirements so, were so stringent that a lot of the organizations couldn't actually partake in that. And so that's what we've done in our grants editing process is to simplify the process, at least in our grants, to make it easier for folks to apply. And we also started building the uh, coaching and um, 
um, one-on-one -on -one meeting with applicants. So hopefully if we ever get that again, it won't happen. We also moved all our grant cycles up. And so what we're asking for is applications that are already in hand. So it's not we're gonna say, once you give us the money, we'll go find the application. So what we're asking for, we've already processed the applications. There's been a public oversight grant panel that came and scored them and then made recommendations to the grant committee. The grant committee reviewed it and then made recommendations to the commission. So it's already gone through the process. So we're trying to cut some of that like work out of the way before it comes to budget. And so next year, we're also moving the grant cycles up a little earlier so that by next year, by February, you will have all of the applications in and you'd know what the budget's gonna look like. And in the previous years, we've been getting whatever little piece of budget we get and then trying to cut it into much more smaller pieces. And we've moved that cycle up early to kind of avoid that problem. Um, and the state also has had problems. The State Arts Council has opened a second round of uh, federal dollars that, because they are not able to match the federal requirements to give this money away. And so it's, it's been an ongoing problem, but uh, I will find a way to spend all the money that's given to us. Uh, I want to address one thing on the capital piece is that um, currently in our grant guidelines, you cannot buy real property. To me, that's a concern because it, capital prop dollars keep going to organizations that own high capital. There's no pathway for a new organization to buy property, right? So if someone wants to build a gallery or a studio and wants to get the $50,000 for down payment, our current laws don't allow that. So I would love to explore creative solutions with the council, with your brilliant minds to see what is the way in which we create pathways to capital, not just to keep giving. I definitely want to support the organizations that have capital, but what do we do? to bring new people into the fold and remove the barrier. So that's something I'd love to explore with you. For the public art, um, out of the eight uh, some million dollars, about six million dollars is committed already. Uh, we're working with um, projects like Nashville, Nashville's uh, Youth Campus for um, Youth Empowerment, um, the parks and libraries that are all in the work. So, the, so about 75% uh, of that is committed and the rest we're holding because of all the fluctuations in the market. Prices have gone up really, really uh, a lot. And, and projects that we got bids on are almost uh, are going up by 150 percent um, because the fabrication costs going up much higher. So that's how we've worked the public arts um, budget and and. Um, uh, the other other pinch point there is that staffing wise, the participatory budget has added a lot of projects into our pipeline. And so we're trying to manage that without, without additional staff. And that's with just $2 million. We're managing three public arts projects from the participatory budget. And one of our concerns is that with $10 million, if the same ratio holds, we're looking at $2 million worth of public arts coming into us from the participatory budget. And we don't have the staff for that. So, so, so those are all the pain points for us. And I'm grateful for any guidance and advice you can give us to move past. Councilmember Van Rees. Uh, I don't have any other questions. Thank you, Councilmember Van Rees. Councilmember Henderson, you're recognized. Thank you, Chair Redden, and thank you, Director. I appreciate your uh, leadership and where, where your department's headed and the good work that you're doing, so thank you. Um, I think I, my questions, uh, I've got kind of two prongs here. Um, I know under your uh, predecessor, uh, Jen Cole, there was a, a, a good initiative to kind of inventory all the public artwork what was its status? Um, you know, I think there's an online platform if, you know, citizens kind of want to engage or, you know, go on a circuit and kind of see those things, um, make sure that everybody was aware of where they all were. Um, but from a maintenance perspective, I did not know if there had been, and I couldn't recall, I guess Council Lady Van Reese might, but, you know, do we have a little bit of a catch up? Like, hey, we've been neglecting this stuff and then now have we kind of operationalized how are we going to keep the shiny bird in the park looking shiny? And how are like and and is that can we do that with just seventeen k, eighteen k a year? I mean, is that or, or is that how we're maintaining the public artwork with just eighteen thousand dollars a year? Yeah, you're recognized. Go ahead. Thanks. You can talk back and forth. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, so so um, we just hired a public arts manager, collections manager, just about three months ago. And so that is the first priority. Uh, I, I mean, um, and Leslie Owens has been with us for many years as a public arts manager, but now she's gonna be working 
purely on what you are talking about. Our arts collection is estimated between 30, 25 to $35 million. And uh, our concern was the same concern that you have, that we are sitting on this huge investment and asset and not doing the due diligence on maintenance. And so we have started that process with a collection arts, um, public arts collection manager. And we also engaged a consultant to help us develop uh, a plan. And so we should have something for you in the next three to six months on okay. the maintenance and the budget for that. Right, that's great to hear. And then um, uh, in your uh, GSD fund here, the professional and purchase services, and that might be something like what you're just speaking about there, um, you know, uh, versus uh, your, your FTEs and what they are doing. Anything else that we need to just kind of uh, be aware of, just for, you know, from an interest and operational standpoint in that professional and purchased services, sure, yes. what's in that uh, 600,000? So we have five positions that are open right now, a grants manager, a restorative arts and equity manager, and restorative arts and equity coordinator, public art manager, and communications manager. Those positions have been open, and we are f meeting those needs for the public with lots of consultants, and that's that's where a lot of those costs are going. Understood. And, and we okay. might be eating some of our salaries too there because we're trying to meet all of the needs without having a full staff and it's cons consultants who are helping us meet that right now. Okay, and do you think um, now that, I mean, again, there's the whole COVID era of things, but then some of the challenges in the department, do you just, do you anticipate, um, to your colleague's point, when, and she shared there that, that happy news as you kind of just uh, moving forward, do you anticipate any difficulty in, in getting fully staffed, or do you think once everybody's like, oh, okay, everything's going right, that's a place that I want to be, that's a place that I want to be working or yeah. are you finding that, I guess, generally in the environment, is it becoming difficult to kind of hire? Two, into two the things are making it difficult to hire. I think there's still an opportunity for us to hire, but two things are making it difficult. Our salaries compared to other uh, salaries are not com comparable. I'm working with HR to figure out if there's a, a, a technical classification we might be able to use because especially for folks who might work in public arts, this project management, they have to read architectural plans, they have to understand electricity right. and plumbing and, and understand how to cultivate an artist. So it's, it's a very complicated work um, environment. So we're trying to work with HR to figure that out. The other piece is uh, what's happening at the state is, is, is cause of concern. Like we found qualified applicants and they turned us down based on what's happening at the state and, and they didn't yeah. feel safe coming to Nashville in, in this environment. And so for that, we we're working with recruiters to look at people who might be in Tennessee already and don't feel like it's a risk for them to move. Or we're looking at other blue cities in red states that might be able to help us maneuver such tensions. So if, if maybe Miami or uh, Cleveland, uh, you know, places that have similar state locality. Because sadly, maybe they might be worse than we are now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, that's, yeah, that's important for us to be uh, aware of um, from a from a hiring perspective. So thank you so much for that. Thank you, Council Member Henderson. Do we have any other questions? Um, I just want to let everybody know that came here tonight and uh, Mr. Singh and T and everybody that uh, we will be looking very closely at your budget and trying to make sure that y'all can thrive because we don't want to just have an arts commission that's not thriving, that's just kind of floundering along. That's not any place we need to be. We don't need to just put money into something that's not succeeding. So we just want to make sure whatever we put in, it gives you the opportunity to grow and succeed. And so I promise you we will do that, okay? Thank you. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.